we're going to do an example reading from a file. So uh, let's say I want to read from a file. In this case, I, uh, I want to read from a .csv file. That's a comma separated values file, CSV. Uh, you'll see this CSV or uh, comma separated values file and uh, it looks something like uh, this. I'm going to show you. So this is a little file I downloaded from finance.google.com. I'm going to drop that in there. Okay. It says data.csv. I can, uh, you see it's got the Excel there. So if I double click, it'll open it with Excel. I don't really need that. I'm just going to go open. Uh, open with uh, the text editor and there it is so that's the file uh, that's a comma separated value so you see got date open high and the date is the first column then a comma then the open price of the stock this is google stock uh, actually and uh, comma the high price low and the closing price of google stock was 645 dollars 90 cents on the 30th of December 11. So let's say I want to read from this file all the closing prices. There's a bunch of them, 253 all the way to January, and calculate the average. So I want to calculate the average closing price for Google stock for 2011. Um, how do I do that? Well, first I need to start with the file name. So string file name is and it's data.csv uh, right so it's data.csv I'm gonna use that uh, now I'm gonna need to read from the file well the way we read from the file is exactly the same way we read from the keyboard with that is with a scanner so this is also the, an input stream and so I'm gonna say scanner input stream is a new scanner now here comes the first thing if uh if i put there just file name like that like we were doing before and that is not gonna work actually uh let me go over here uh, well first i gotta fix this uh command one tells me i forgot my import so i'm gonna put that in there and now we can go here to my scanner and uh, if you read the documentation right here says this constructs a new scanner that produces value scan from the specified string. So if I did this, what it actually does, it is going to read from this string. So literally it's going to read data.csv. It's not going to read from the contents of that file. What I need is an actual file. File, file. There is a file class in Java, capital F, file. And uh, we use it like such, as you might imagine, file name. And of course, we got to do the import that. And now this, this is going to create a new file. Right? So that's how I do that. And then I can use this as a parameter here. Uh, now that's getting closer to working. Uh, of course, I still need to now surround this with a try catch block because it could be that the file doesn't exist. Okay, so uh, before I go on, a couple of things. This this file um, class has all these methods that are very useful. Uh, for example, you know you can delete the file. You can check if does this file exist or not. Uh, you can get the the path to the file, the full path name, you know, like slash whatever, or C colon slash whatever, your windows. Uh, and you can do all the kind of, all this, all the stuff you typically do with the finder, you know, change file names and remove, uh, etc. You can do a lot of that with this uh, file class. So that is how you would do that. If you had to rename files or move files, copy files, you would do that there. Uh, so do, you know, that is uh, something to do to, you know, you should read about file. But we're not going to be doing that right now. We want to read from the actual input stream. And the way we read it, again, is the same way we read it from the keyword. We say while input stream dot 
has an X. So while there's data on the input stream, I'm just going to get it. I'm going to say string uh, data is input stream dot uh, next. And so next returns to me the next thing. And then to me, check it out. We're going to print it out, print out the data. And at the end, of course, remember, it's always good to close it. So I want to close my input stream. So let's run that, see what happens. And you see it did work. So I printed out the first line. And um, now it's not clear you know, what next is giving me. So let me change this. Uh, I'm going to add that there. So you know, put three stars there and then run it. And that makes it clear that each time through the next loop so each time i do next data is this whole thing right so basically data is a whole line and so because i print the whole line and then i print the three stars so okay uh, getting closer but uh you know that's kind of a problem right because what i want is the closing price which is you know this one 645 90 642 40 etc so I need, because I know this is a CSV file, I know, you know, I need to split this around this comma. So I need to put the first, second, third, fourth, um, and then get this number. So how do I do that? Well, uh, I read the documentation. You read about the string class. Now, you see, after this line, so this gets the, uh, gets a whole line. So now data has a whole line. So I need to do something in memory with that data. And luckily there is this split. There's this split method, which you can read about, which uh, splits data, uh, splits the string, the data string in this case, into parts. And so you tell it, you can read this you know, in, in detail. You can put a full regular expression in there uh, for now we're not going to bother with that we're just going to put the comma there which you know, is a regular expression a very simple one and uh, so what this is going to do is it's going to split that string into an array of strings um, it's called its values so so you can see the split method returns a string array and that's going to be an array of strings it's going to be this string and this string and this string and this string uh, so to check that that does work, let's do values. And then what we want is the close. So the close is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Close is going to be number 4, I think. Let's run that, see what happens. There, I think we got it. Yeah, there's the close, 645, 90, etc. So you see this star, I'm just printing that out. It's not part of the values, remember? So I can get rid of that, run it again, and boom. Just the prices. Awesome. Uh, one problem is, you know, we got close and the first line that, you know, that's the first line that's, uh, I don't like that. Uh, I don't need that. So I'm just going to get rid of the first line. I just copy in this part here and, uh, you know, ignore the first line. So I'm just going to get the first line first and now my loop. Doesn't have the first line in there. Okay, awesome. Now I need to calculate the average of these numbers. One problem is that these numbers are not numbers. They're values four, which is a array of strings. So values four is actually a string. So I need to turn that string into a number, into in this case a double, because I got a period there. Um, so I'm gonna call this closing prize, and I'm gonna need some parsing so parse double values four and there we go so we're going to use the double parse double which takes a string and parses that into a double i'm going to put that into my closing price i'm going to print the closing price run that again and uh good so it seems to be working um there we go and uh what's next average so now i need to calculate the average well the average i just need to add them all up and divide them by the total number 
So I'm going to set up a sum is zero and the number of prices is zero. And once I get the closing price, I can say the sum is the sum plus the current closing price. Oops closing price and I just need to increment the number of prices by one and then after I say after I close I'm gonna print average is it's gonna be the sum divided by the number of prices right that's the average and let's run that again it prints all the numbers and it prints out the average 568 so that's pretty much it. You know, when you're reading from a file, you're just using a scanner as you're doing it. Uh, the, there is not much to it. The, the trickiest thing is that you're always reading strings um, and you're having to parse them. Now, there, there is one workaround when you don't have a CSV file. Uh, you can do something like if you say you just had a bunch of doubles. Then you can do, you know, next double uh, or next float. Uh, if you had, say, doubles and floats separated by either spaces um, or the new line characters. So there are various, many ways of doing this. Um, but mostly when you're reading from files, you know, that's the hardest thing is most of your time is spent uh, typecasting and parsing the various data types into doubles or integers or whatever you need.